Skinny. Let's talk a little Bengals. They went to Landover, Maryland. They faced the Washington football team, and hey, Joe Burrow's knee is still intact, so I guess we'll call that a win. Yeah, and he actually was on that field in, in, in Landover, so that was a win, too. He worked out before the game, didn't play. Still up to debate whether he plays this week or not. Zach Taylor today really wasn't definitive one way or the other. Um, I did find it interesting when they cut Eric Dungy this morning. It made me think that maybe that was leaning towards Joe playing because somebody else has to play in that in that third preseason game. If I were a betting man, I'd say he gets a handful of snaps, but um, they've been pretty on the cautious side with all of this all along. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But I, I think he takes a couple snaps. Let, let's start talking about that, that game against the Washington football team because it was a game that didn't really have a lot of offensive highlights. Right. Uh, and coming away from it, I'm not sure if, at least I watching it, learned all that much about this team. It seemed that both teams were kind of conservative. Was it a case of good defenses? Was it just pulling it back, coaches figuring out the new preseason. Yeah, it, it's all that. But I will say, I mean, don't forget, Washington's defensive front is arguably the best in the NFL, and right. they showcased that early in the game. Uh, you know, you had the questionable holding call on Quentin Spain, but it was a holding call. Then you had Xavier Suafila got blown up on a run play. And you had some drops from Jamar Chase that were going to get to. That didn't help either. Uh, but I, I to the other side of the ball, I thought the Bengals' defense, this is four straight series they've played and played really well against the first-team offense. Um, you know, sacking Tom Brady last week to end that series. They put some good pressure on, on Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, they gave up one big play to start the game, a 28-yard pass play. Other than that, they gave up two first downs, had a turnover, had a sack, um, gave up, you know, 52 yards. But, again, 28 on one play. I, I'm pretty impressed with this defense. You know, I, I, I'm not to the point of being over my skis. Where's the, where's the media guy <laughs> I need to put my, my hand up on? But I, I, I was, I've been impressed with the defense. I've been impressed with them since training camp started. So that, that's a good sign, I guess. All right, let, let's talk about that offensive line because this was a really good test, as you mentioned. That, that football team defensive front is really, really good across the board. Uh, they, they played all right. Do you feel more confident after this performance uh, going forward? Yeah, no, uh, no, I don't. <laughs> um, and, and that's where we're at with the, the conundrum of the guard play, right? I mean, you've got three spots that are settled. Two tackles are settled and Trey Hopkins is settled. I think we saw the starting guards in Washington are going to start the opener. That's Xavier Suafil at right guard, Quentin Spain at left guard. And I think that's almost a little bit by default because let's not forget there was big hope Jackson Carmen after on draft night was going to come in and be the starter at one of those two guards, probably the right guard spot. That didn't happen. They've given Michael Jordan every chance in the world to win a starting job for a third year. He's lost it the last two years, and he's kind of lost it now again. Then there was the miracle experiment of Deontay Smith, and that, that's still going on, and that's good. Um, but, you know, he didn't get a chance to play because of the dehydration issues. Um, Jackson, it sounded like off a of film played okay again but that, that you continue to you don't get effusive praise very much from Bengals coaches about Jackson Carmen any longer I think it's more of Jackson needs to get it going to earn a spot so I won't be disappointed with Quentin Spain and Xavier Suofilo but that's not what I think they envisioned when this whole thing went down they envisioned at least a Jackson Carmen at one of those and maybe one of the two vets at the other, but we're still kind of back to square one. One more preseason game to go. The Bengals will actually be at home facing the Dolphins. Uh, with this shortened preseason, we weren't sure how the coaches were going to handle it. We're still not sure how they're going to handle that third game. What do you expect out of the Bengals when they take the field at Paul Brown Stadium? Yeah, I, I would think you'll get probably more than a quarter because, you know, neither one of the first game was one series. This last game was, uh, you know, basically the starters were out before the first quarter was over, but they did play a little extended time. I got a feeling you'll see uh, even more extended. That doesn't mean we're going to see – if Joe Burrow plays, it won't be with that whole group for the whole first half. Um, you probably, if you're lucky, if you see Joe play a series, if at all. Maybe the same for Joe Mixon. You know, I, no reason to risk that. But I do think you maybe see extended time from what probably will be the offense. I think the offensive line you see trotted out against Miami is the offensive line you'll see trotted out in week one of the regular season. I think it's the – you know – except for Trey Hopkins if he doesn't play, and he may not play in this game either. So um, that's what I want to see, and I'd like to see the defense one more time against yet another team. If they can continue to stack good performance on top of good performance, go into that opener, I feel pretty good about the way they're playing. Well, the big storyline of Bengals training camp and Bengals preseason right now is Jamar Chase. Everyone was excited for the fancy new Ferrari in the garage, but the Ferrari uh, doesn't have some tires. I don't know what the correct metaphor is. Bottom line, Jamar's having some uh, catching problems. Yeah, it's dropped its tires at this point. Um, yeah, he, I, I, I honestly don't get it. Um, I, you know, some part of camp you're like, okay, I, I get this. He didn't play last year. In fact, I even asked him a question a couple of weeks ago of, you know, did, did you realize that that year off was going to affect you the way it has? And I, he basically didn't think it would, and he admitted it kind of had, and he's trying to get back up to the speed of the game. 
processing things quickly. And then he went through a couple of practices where it started to click, and you think, all right, it's starting to turn the corner. Has a nice catch, screen, and run in, in Tampa. Not hard to catch a screen pass, but it was still a nice catch and run and a good play. Well, boy, the other night, three, three targets, three drops, and a lot of it was it didn't look like he liked tight windows to catch in. He didn't like bodies coming at him. And then you think, okay, well, that's just that night, and it'll get better today. Well, today at practice, literally the very first pass in 11-on-11s, 11 he's wide open running a deep in route behind the linebackers in front of the safeties, drop. Next one in a 7-on-7 session. Goes right through his hands in the end zone, right to Von Bell's hands for an interception. At some point, you got to catch the ball. I mean, I don't – look, I, I, I'm still supporting the pick. I still believe in the pick. I still believe in the player. I believe in his talent. I believe in, in the, the productivity he had at LSU. But you got to catch the ball. And now it's starting, I think, really wear on him a little bit mentally. And there was a good question I asked of, of Zach Taylor today of, you know, what point do you look at like an Auden Tate to take some of the pressure off and maybe get, you know, get him some snaps? And Zach's answer was kind of, yeah, we may have to go in that direction. And listen, for a staff that can't get off to a slow start, I mean, 625 and 1 going into this year, you ain't allowed to go 0 and 4. You ain't allowed to maybe even go 1 and 3. You better win games early. And if it, Jamar Chase is going to drop balls on you, it's going to cost you. Well, then you got to play somebody else. I- to be clear, we swore last week we weren't going to overreact to one preseason game. We're not going to overreact to two preseason games, a couple practice. Jamar Chase has a long way to no go question. before, before no we question. even talk about the B word of bust. How concerned should we be, though, with him this early on? It seems that, I mean, whether it's just inconsistent quarterback between practices and on the, and, and game day, is it the yips? Like, how, how concerned should we be? And that's the thing. I don't know. We didn't get a chance. To, you know, Jamar was not made available after the game on Friday. He was not made available to us today, even though we asked. Um, so I don't know what's going through Jamar's head right now. He was pretty honest a couple of weeks ago of admitting that, hey, yeah, there's some rust. Not that I thought that I thought I wouldn't have that kind of rust. Um, but for whatever reason, something's going on right now where he's not catching the ball. It was part of camp where he didn't get some separation, some route running, where, where, you know, questions were there. And I get all of that, new offense, new system and, and stuff. People could argue the other night, well, you know, he, Brandon Allen's not going to be throwing the ball to him. Well, Joe Burrow's the one that threw the ball to him today. And those were the two drops today. And I've seen drops from Joe Burrow to him as well. I, I don't think concern until I see it in the regular season. To this point, none of this matters other than it is alarming to continue to watch. So, um if he can start stacking some practices, and the funny part is we're kind of running out of practices to stack. If he can start doing that, then I think any concern goes away. But if this continues practice after practice after practice, you better think of, a, of an alternative. Let's talk about the rest of the, those alternatives, the rest of the receiver group. It's a deep one with uh, Tyler Borden, T. Higgins, obviously headlining. And it, they've been great. And, and they have been very good. Uh, what do you see out of this group, and, and what – what can they be this season? Yeah, I think it's different body types, and 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 you know, from the main three on paper, if Chase becomes the real deal, that's a that's a great group. Auden Tate, he's not very fast. He you know, he's one of those guys you, you look and you go, well, the measurables other than his physical size at six five two twenty eight don't ma- measure up. He's really slow getting out of breaks. He's not very quick, but man. That dude catches everything thrown his way. He made a spectacular catch on Friday. He made another one in practice today. Um, he's a reliable guy. They love Mike Thomas, and Mike's, you know, he's kind of been a journeyman guy. And then the back end of that, Trent Irwin's probably played his way into that six wide receiver spot. They're starting to let him catch some punts, maybe as kind of a secondary play to Darius Phillips. That was Trent Taylor's role. It looked like Trent Taylor was going to be the six receiver, the punt returner. That's kind of gone by the wayside. So I think Trent Irwin's probably got a leg up. And if they keep seven, and I don't think they do, you're probably down to the Stanley Morgan Trent Taylor conversation. But if the big three, at least two of them, I know I, I can I can buy. If the third one is what we hope and think, it's it's a great group. Auden Tate is interesting to me because for the last two years, I've only been here two years, so I can only call that back. Uh, he seems everyone calls him the hidden gem on this Bengals team. At what point does he stop being a hidden gem and you start to question why are we seeing it in practice, but he can't do it on the field? Well, that's legit. And, and two years ago, Jack Taylor's first year, there was a bunch of injuries at wide receiver. And he actually had to play and played pretty well. 40 catches for 575 yards and threw it off the top of my head. Eight starts, nine starts, something like that, and, and some other you know games played. He performed pretty well, and I, I think you're right. Now, listen, he is nowhere near talent-wise up to the big three. So if the big three play to that level... But, again, he is a nice security blanket to have as a fourth wide receiver, plus just that physicality. I think, I, I think I'd find something more in the red zone for that guy because he is going to win every 50-50 ball. He's going to win 20-80 balls against him. He's going to lean over guys back and pull the ball. He's just got such strong hands, and he's just so good at it that I think you've got to find some, some more expanded role than what they had this past year. year before, they did have an expanded role, and he performed. I think he needs an expanded role.